everyone. Welcome back to Getting the Cash Flow Game with Kay and Kay. You got to be right. Uh, today, we are talking about building your real estate team. And if you have not listened to our podcast before, we talk all about generating cash flow, mainly through multifamily investing. So we talk about everything from how to invest, where to invest, who to invest with, syndicating, direct ownership, property management, all the things that you need to know about investing. And on that note, if you could do us a huge favor is subscribe. Also, give us a review, five stars. We love it. It also helps promote us and get better guests on. So anyways, Crystal, let's jump right into it. So we were talking about this. Um, I don't care if you're active, you're a new investor, whatever you are, the team that you're going to get is, you know, it's the most important thing. I think this is the mo- one of the most important things because literally – having the wrong people on your team can make or break a deal. Or not having a team. Yeah. I mean, I think the, the biggest thing we see with people is that they just want to go straight into finding a deal and buying something. And it's like, okay, that's great. I'm glad. I like the enthusiasm. I like the eagerness. But one of the best things that you can do to guarantee your success, it's something that all successful people do, at least the ones we've been talking to, and we've been talking to a lot, Yep. Uh, they have a good team of people around them and actually not just a good team, people who are way better than them and way smarter and more experienced. So I would say- But they also have one thing, Crystal, what is it that we're learning that you need to have, if you really want to do anything and crush it at, is a- Mentor. So that would be probably the first member of your team uh, that you should start with is a mentor. And let me tell you, Kenny and I did not have mentors. We did not start with mentors. Uh, we've only recently started, you know, hiring coaches and paying people to mentor us in our business. Um, and so, look, I have a personal trainer to help me, you know, work out and be as fit as I can be. I have someone, a uh, mentor that helps me with, you know, buying real estate and, and doing as good as I can entering new markets or growing my portfolio. We have a mentor for that. Kenny has a, a mentor to help him scale his business. Uh, they talk on many, actually, he has several people. He's part of a mastermind group with you know, tons of extremely Yeehaw. successful people. So um, we pay, you know, six figures uh, a year for these people. So for different things. We are, that's, yeah, yeah. Tra- full transparency. We're, yeah. We used to not believe in it. We didn't spend money on it. We thought it was stupid and a waste of money. We did. Oh, well, just, it's better just well, to I think there's this yourself. fear that you're going to waste your money. Yeah. And so what we'll say is, yeah, we, this year, we'll probably spend six figures on it. And a lot of people are like, that's ridiculous. But because we think we take six, six figures and you can 10x that number through growth. It might take over time. But the big thing is, is that what could take you five years to grasp, get, figure out all this, sometimes you can get there in a year with a really good mentor. And so that's why mentors to us are really very big. I think it's a huge game changer. And look, for some of you guys listening to this or watching this, you might want to just do real estate as a side hustle. You might want to do real estate and, you know, fire your job, quit your job and all that. A mentor can get you to that faster or some of it. Or just to help you realize who you are at your core. Because uh, I think a lot of us waste time going into endeavors because there's a lot of shiny things out there, especially these days with social media and everything. There's so many opportunities out there and you can find yourself going in all these different directions when at the end of the day, I think all of us want to make money. We want to be successful. We want to, you have know, freedom. do have freedom to do the things that we really want to be doing, whether it's spending time with family or traveling or who knows what. But whatever it is that you want to be doing, we all want the money and the freedom to be able to do that. So we can very easily get sidetracked with all these shiny objects and all these people who are doing really well at a bunch of different things. Uh, but you need to find out who you are at your core, what you really want to do, because maybe you want to invest in real estate because you want to generate cash flow, but you love your business. Maybe you need to keep working in your business and focusing on that and you know, investing in real estate might take your time away. Well, guess what? You can invest passively. Uh, you can give other people your money that have already built the relationships, already have the team, already have the track record, already have the experience uh, to go out there and get, get deals and give you a good return on your money. So you don't have to do things just one way. Uh, a mentor is going to help you figure that out. And in my personal opinion, I think that you should have a mentor that you pay a, a pretty penny. Like you should pay for them because when you get something free, like You mentioned, sure, you can read books, you can listen to, you know, YouTube and podcasts and all this kind of stuff. It's great, but you really want to dive deep. And that's what a mentor and a coach is going to do. When you pay someone, they go deep with you. Of course, it's up to you to make the best of that situation, to network, to ask the questions, to communicate, 
you know, to, to take action, but that person will help you do a deep dive and get that growth uh, that you want and hopefully avoid some mistakes. Boom. Wow. So if you weren't sold on the mentor, uh, you might want to listen to that clip back like five more times because I want to go hire another mentor after listening to that. So that was a good rant. I do agree with that. So Crystal, let's jump into, because um, I want to move through this pretty quickly because there's a lot of things to talk about. So let's talk about first step for us is very obvious. Somebody doesn't know. Look, we're, we're talking about somebody right now, first time real estate investor. You have a mentor. If you didn't want to get a mentor, you don't want to go that route. You're going to listen, read books, listen to the podcast. You're going to wish you had that. later, but let's but, go but to the next let's one. Let's go. So next thing is, is you should be figuring out how much money do I have? What can I qualify for? What type of property am I going to buy? Is it two to four units? Is it, you know, industrial? Is it multifamily? Whatever it is, but people listening to this are probably more like two to four unit multifamily. So who's next on your team? A mortgage broker and a basically like commercial broker, a real estate, a real estate broker. broker, that's what you would need. So now in the commercial or multifamily world, we, we refer to them as real estate brokers and the residential world, they're realtors. Um, same, same, same damn thing. So uh, a real estate broker, a realtor, whatever you want to call them, they're the same people. I would say definitely get in touch with the people who are doing the kinds of deals that you want to be buying. Uh, you don't want to get in touch with a realtor who's doing these one-off uh, things. We see it all the time. Uh, that they just don't know numbers and they don't know investment properties really well. So make sure you get in contact with someone who knows investment properties specifically. And then whether if it's multifamily or, you know, two to four units, whatever it may be, make sure that, that they know their, their business in their area that you're looking at. And here's my piece of advice. And I don't think I heard you say it, but I would find a residential person on two to four that is in the game. Mm-hmm. That's in the cash flow game, that owns property, run property, they don't have to manage it, that has some experience. Because I'm telling you right now, just because you sell it doesn't mean you've owned it and done it. It's a completely different thing, and I know Crystal and I agree on that. The second thing is, same with a multifamily guy. I'm not saying anything. Look, there is multifamily guys that don't own it. Some of them invest passively. But the ones that own it and went through it, there is a, it's just different. They just add a different level of value to you, um, there's going to be a lot of questions. Like, for example, uh, as a multifamily broker and having done loans for the last 17 years, we're also real estate investors. So when clients call us with situations, uh, look, every deal has something. I mean, that's part of why we love real estate. Every deal is different. Even no matter how many years you've done it, you always see something. You're like, hmm, that's interesting. Haven't run into that in a long time or ever before. So at least if you have someone who's an active real estate investor who's actively dealing with issues on their own properties or growing their portfolio, you're going to come to them and they're going to be able to strategize with you how to get the best loan amount, how to negotiate the best deal, how to deal with this tenant that's not paying, how to raise your rents to get the loan you need, like all these, all these different things, you know, even just referrals, like, Hey, it can be pretty easy to build your team. If you get in contact with the right people who are actively in real estate, they can set you up with the good CPA, the good property managers, the good, like good people attract other good people, people who are actively in the game and successful. They need already have a great team that they're working need, with. They need them to be so successful. So you can make this team building exercise a lot easier if you get in touch with the right people at the beginning of your journey. They can at least refer you to a couple of good individuals. You can pick them and make your decision, but at least they can get you to people who are well-known in the industry, have good reputations, and you know they've already had good experiences working with them. Perfect. So the next thing I'd say is I'm going to kind of lump a few in here. So obviously we talked about um, real estate broker, mortgage broker. And the next thing I'm going to say is a couple in a row is you definitely want to find a good insurance person. Once again, the insurance person, do their clients own investment properties? Is this what they do? If the dog, your neighbor's dog jumps over the fence and bites your tenant in the leg and they sue you, are you covered? If that is scaring you and your insurance agent goes, huh? You should run because they should know answers to that. So work with insurance people that do what you do. If you own an ambulance company or you own restaurants, go to an insurance person that works with restaurant owners and ambulance company. So it's the same thing, guys. Um, so that's that. The second thing I'd say to on um, in this group is I would be reaching out. And like I said, this is probably where you're going to get referrals for the insurance and for the next person in line is you should definitely start figuring out who is a real estate attorney that you would want to work with. You went over that insurance thing like real fast. What One. did I know? But we're going to go back. So I'm going in my line here. So it's the, 
you know, the um, you can you can jump in. So let me just go through them and you can elaborate. How about that? How about we do that? So we've got sorry, she she nailed my train of thought here. So we've got insurance. Then we've got a real estate uh, attorney. But remember, this isn't just any real estate attorney. You're talking about do you have an eviction attorney? Maybe you need somebody. So it could be one or two different attorneys. Maybe one just specializes in eviction. Maybe one specializes in like, hey, I've got to sue somebody for something else involved in real estate, right? And the third thing I would say to lump it in is because they all go together, is you need to start having a conversation or start having conversations and interviewing um, multiple property management companies. And Crystal will start elaborating on insurance and everybody else. Okay, so let's rewind it back, three people. Um, on the insurance, uh, you know, I see a lot of people that go to just, you know, hey, I have my auto insurance with State Farm or Farmer's Insurance, and they told me they do, you know, apartment buildings, and, you know, they do, actually. They, they do. Um, but you want to make sure that you're going, you know, I would say that there's a handful of carriers that are really doing the majority of the multifamily, and I will tell you it's not State Farm and Farmer's Insurance uh, or Farmer's Insurance. Cha -ching, cha -ching. So, um, you know, uh, from my experience, it can be far more expensive than the average, which is going to affect your loan amount. It's going to affect your cash flow. Uh, if you know, as, or if you're learning with apartments, it's all about having the highest NOI possible. That is how you add value to your building. So this is one item that you want to make sure that's cost effective, but also like Kenny said, that they understand the coverages. They can go through all of it with you because there's a lot of different types of liability that come with owning an apartment building. So. Uh, you definitely need to make sure that you have the right insurance there and that it's somebody who's really experienced, but also um, that you're getting the best cost for like what's industry standard. The so basically the best bang for your buck. Couple examples real quick, but very quick. There's been multiple clients, multiple, I don't even know how many, that have come to us and they've got a portfolio and they're like, let me send you over my state farm or farmer's insurance. And you're like, oh boy, we immediately get on the phone and I go, well, I'm gonna make you a very happy person. Why? I said, I guarantee you we'll probably save you like 20 grand plus what? No way. Send over the portfolio, get them back the quote. They call their farmer's guy and the guy's like, I can't match it. And they end up leaving relationships because they're saving 20, 30, 40,000, whatever a year. Like Crystal said, that's, oh, honestly, the that's first literally cash flow in your pocket. That literally is you paying more could basically like you're not getting to a loan amount you want. I mean, you could lose. Look, if you're paying fifteen hundred dollars more a month insurance, you could be losing a hundred thousand dollars loan value. I mean, I don't know, Crystal. That's more of your game, you know. Yeah, but uh, so the first person that we ever saved, I, I would say probably like the biggest uh, thing uh, we ever did was we had a client who owned like five hundred units, um, and he had individual policies on every single one of his buildings. So this isn't necessarily just for like the new real estate investor. It, this even goes for seasoned real estate investors. Check out your check out your insurance because this client has owned properties for like twenty plus years, and we saved him sixty thousand dollars a year on insurance. Same coverage, um, like you know, with experienced carriers. Actually, no, better coverage, stuff. better yeah, coverage. Yeah, it was it was. He and he yeah. didn't even know what was covered. He didn't know that if a ten ninety nine worker was on his property, fell off a ladder, and hurt himself. He didn't know if that was covered. Once again, if you're hearing this, this is also phone, the same person who thought that insurance was a scam, uh, and then proceeded to have like five lawsuits after he got the new insurance. Uh, but that being said, make sure you have good insurance, but also make sure that it's cost effective. So let's move on to real estate. Um, the real estate attorney. I don't really, you know, if I don't really have a ton to say about that because in terms of a real estate attorney. Um, you know, if you're buying small properties, I would say that probably the biggest thing that you're going to have is an attorney to uh, for evictions, and hopefully you're hiring a property manager and they already have an attorney they're working with. Uh, but definitely, you want to work with a, an attorney who's in the courthouse every day dealing with evictions. They make the process super simple. Honestly, the cost of an eviction attorney is roughly the same across the board, so there's not like a huge vary variance between cost of each attorney. It's it's honestly one of these. You know, doing an eviction is kind of just like an easy process for an attorney. It's not anything really that complicated. There are, you know, can, there are some that could be more or less, but it's really not the biggest. Thing. And honestly, if you if you hire if you're hiring an eviction attorney that's been doing it 20, 30 years, no joke, they've probably done 10, 20 thousand plus evictions. It's like Crystal said. It's literally like we're going to court. Doing, it's like there's a whole they, process. They can it's do this stuff in their sleep. Yeah. yeah. This is not complicated. The uh, one, stuff. the only thing I will tell you about, I'm going to jump into the real estate attorneys is. If you pick 
pick a person that's got a, one guy and an assistant. Um, just keep in mind, he can be very, very busy, very overwhelmed. And if you, depending if, if you're a bigger, if you have a big portfolio, those guys usually don't use those guys because they can't get them on the phone. They're busy. So when we had our property management company, we used a bigger company, KT, KTS. Kimball Tyree and Sanchez. Yep. So we're just throwing it out there. Um, They're probably the biggest in California. Yeah. And the reason why we did that is we need somebody to pick up the phone. We need help. We, we had volume. They so, have a whole bunch of attorneys on staff and, you know, you can use any one of them, but you can also talk to the principals. Uh, who are great people, and, and they just kind of make it a, like an easy process. It's, it's really just a system, and you just move through it, and there's a lot of attorneys to make sure that they don't slow things down because on evictions, you want to make sure you're not losing time because every day that they don't serve Ching, that Ching. notice is a day of rent that you lost, so probably. Yeah, and, um, and the bigger thing I will say with that too is that um, picking up the phone is a big deal, and the other thing is is KTS with us, and you know they're really good about it. They like there is our attorneys that are very busy, so when they have to talk to you all the time, they start charging you. They will. They have been really good about not doing on that. the residential side. That's great because for the most part, they don't charge you. You don't have like per fifteen minute charge. It's it's really honestly like a package deal. Like this is about how much your eviction is going to cost. If it goes to trial, it costs a little more. If it goes doesn't, but it's not like a every time I call you for something, you can actually call your eviction attorney and ask for advice and they're not going to send you a huge bill for their time. So uh, the other type of attorney that you might hire uh, or work with would be someone to form your entity. So if you're going to, uh, you know, form an LLC, it's probably only going to be if you're going to do apartments, residential financing is a little more tricky, but uh, you may want to by, you know, after talking to an attorney and after talking to your CPA, you probably will be advised to form an LLC uh, to put the property in, and that would be another type of attorney that you're going to want to have. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk about is, um, so if you're going to self-manage, we'll leave that aside for right now, but if you're going to hire professional management, they would probably have a team of, you know, vendors and things like that, which is going to save you a lot of time. But so property management, obviously is a big deal because I'll let Crystal elaborate on that. Um, that's not one size fits all. They're not all the same. They're not built the same. It's like everybody else. So with the property management, you definitely, in my opinion, you would want to probably interview at least three to five. And you're looking for somebody that you can relate with personality wise. Uh, somebody that, you know, maybe you're newer and you need somebody that's going to give you the time. Like if you're going to this massive company and you're newer and you're not going to get the time and attention you need, that might bother a bug the shit out of you. So that's probably not a person you want to hear. Just because they're bigger and they're the best doesn't mean it's a fit for you. Yeah, all property managers are not created equal. I will say I highly recommend getting professional management because there are a lot of like rules and regulations for landlords. There's landlord tenant laws that you need to abide by. Um, your lease needs to have the proper addendums. I mean, there's just so many reasons. I think uh, a good property manager is worth every single penny and then some. Um, that being said, uh, you definitely want to make sure that you interview people. Uh, 100%, I think that you need to kind of like the person because you're going to be working with them uh, a lot and you're going to be dealing with problems as they arise. So you want to make sure that they have a similar philosophy to you and how they handle things. Um, you want to make sure that they're properly insured, all that good stuff, though. Uh, two, um, you want to make sure that, you know, you're getting a, a budget, uh, a pro forma of what their plans are for the property. How do they handle rent increases? When do they think it's a good time? Like you want to have this kind of uh, a relationship with your property manager and interview a handful of people. Uh, so a property manager is huge and you want to start talking to them early on because they can make the process a lot easier for you. Once you get in contract to buy a property, they can help you out with some of your due diligence, they can, you know, confirm market rents for you um, to make sure that whatever the broker is presenting is reasonable and realistic. Um, so they'll help you with lease audits and all the other things. They'll kind of give you their opinion on the area that you're buying and, and you know, some of the challenges that there might be depending on where you're buying. Uh, so a property manager is a really good person to have because they are boots on the ground every single day in the neighborhood, talking to tenants, showing units making repairs, like they're doing all the things. So they are a huge resource for you just for market data. And don't worry folks, because we will do an entire podcast on property management. So we'll jump into that. So the other thing I was gonna say is if you are self-managing, we're not gonna go through this in this podcast because that's a lot, but there is an entire team that you'd wanna have, vendors and things like that. You're but gonna want your own maintenance people and 
vendors uh, and things like that. So yeah. like crystal sighting. Landscapers and plumbers and electricians and handymen. You know, there's going to be a lot of people. And you could have different things. insurance too, depending on what you're doing. So that's that's why property management might cover it different, you know, different than you. So the next thing I'd say on your team down the road, it might not be right away, is start having a conversation with your CPA. Do you have a CPA? Look, what is your goal? What's your plan for real estate? If you start, if you want to start growing and buying real estate and building a portfolio, and if your CPA, just like I said, does your insurance person work with real estate investors, right? Does your real estate agent work with real estate investors? Does your loan officer work with real estate investors, right? These it's different and it's not do they just work with real estate investors are they like in the game is that their primary focus um a lot of cpas work with real estate investors but uh, a lot of them don't advise you they just file your tax return because that's what you pay them to do every year they're not doing uh st strategy and planning with you and there are a lot of tax benefits to owning real estate so you want to have a, a cpa who can also advise you and yeah you're gonna pay extra for this person but this, if, if this person saves you money, for example, we hired a new CPA. I didn't pay any taxes last year. Prior to that, we paid six figures every single year. And I didn't know how my clients that are making, you know, millions of dollars a year, that's not me. Somehow they're not paying any taxes, but I'm, you know, paying taxes, a lot of taxes. So that was because we didn't have the right CPA. We didn't have the, he wasn't advising us on what we needed to do. So you need someone who's gonna strategize based on your plans and position you uh, well to, you know, not have to pay taxes. I, I, I've heard this with people that, you know, there are some real estate investors that like brag, hey, I paid a million dollars in taxes a year. That must mean you made a lot of money. Yeah, it did, but it also probably meant that you didn't have, you know, you weren't implementing tax strategies that you have readily available to you if someone lets you know about it, positions you properly, and just follows the rules. They have to know the rules, and then they just Falls follow them. Falls so yeah. you need a good CPA. Uh, it's it's hugely beneficial to you, and it needs to be someone who is not just working with real estate investors, who's very focused on it, and who has advisory services that you can utilize to help position you the best. And if you want more information on the CPA, you should definitely check out, we'll, we'll put it in the link or something, our interview with Tom Wheelwright. Go back and research it. It's a yeah. really good one, but he will explain you know, how to take some of these tax advantages. Also, just it's a really good interview, so you should really listen to and that. And he puts out a lot of content yeah. that's so super valuable. Did, and he wrote so. two books, so you can go get those. Um, so we got CPA, Crystal, what else am I kind of leading off? Because we're doing this in like a 30,000 foot view. We're going to dive in deeper to taxes and all that on podcast, but this is more of a, like, I'm looking above of what you this need. This is an overview of yes. the, the team members that you need. And I would say that that's probably it um, uh, as far as like the team members. And like I said, you're always going to be building that team as you scale up. You know, you're working with one real estate broker. Maybe they specialize in five to 15 unit apartments in a couple of specific neighborhoods. You might want to, you know, start talking to brokers who are doing, you know, 15 to 30 unit deals in different neighborhoods. So uh, again, it's always about continuing to evolve and growing and getting people on your team that specialize in the, the path in the place that you are in your journey. So um, it's not just a, a one and done. You don't just do it now and then like forget about it later. So um, just a quick review, it's have your mentor contact a mortgage broker and a real estate broker to determine, are you buying a two to four unit? Are you buying a five plus unit? What does that look like for the financing? What are the options? What are the price ranges, the neighborhoods? Can you, can you afford? Um, then it's your uh, insurance, your real estate, real estate attorney, your property manager, and your CPA. So those are the top, I would say, seven people on your team that you need uh, in order to get started. And I would do, I would start working on that sooner than later. Last but not least, I'll leave with this. A couple of things to throw in there. You, if you're going to self-manage, I would definitely find, you know, if it's a good contractor or somebody, if not start interviewing, cause if you buy a property and you have a turn, you're like, I don't have anybody. This is something you do now guys. So all these things we're talking about, you should start doing this before you buy real estate. Cause when you buy real estate, if you have an eviction problem, if you have a contractor problem, you have this, you have insurance, it's, you have your team. You don't build the team once you own it and you have a problem and you're, you're calling us with an emergency, it's fine. But we're telling you as like, if I'm your mentor, build it now, get it together before you start buying real estate. Because also once you are in contract to buy a property, it's a whirlwind of 
information and time. Like you've got a window for doing due diligence. You need to make sure that you're, you know, you need to do the leases. You need to do the property inspection. You need to identify what rep repairs need to be done. You need to start getting insurance quotes. You need to start getting mortgage quotes. Like there's so many things to do in a short span of time once you get in escrow for a property that you don't want to be starting all of this because then you're starting late. You have no idea what you can qualify for. Maybe the deal is just going to blow up anyways. You don't know where to get insurance. You don't know who, who's going to manage the property. Like that, that is not a position you know, you're not setting yourself up for success if you wait until you're in escrow. You need to start having these conversations up front because things are going to get very busy once you're in contract to purchase a property. And heck, I'd go to Home Depot and get a commercial comp set up and start doing that too. Because Now you're getting into the yeah. details. But, but anyways, that is the team. That's who you need. Um, if you have not, if you own real estate and you don't have any of that, you can always reach out to us. You guys know how to contact us. Call us, email us, text us, DM us shoot a light in the sky, I don't know what, um, a help sign, whatever. But I really, really advise if you're buying real estate, take the time, build a team, start interviewing people with all this process. Remember, 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 you really want to work with people that are understand this business, that are hopefully in the business, and they're in the cash flow game. Otherwise, that's all I got to say, Crystal.